Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to the Hyundai Ionic plug-in hybrid. Now, thanks to Hyundai UK, I've got this car for the next week. And finally, I'm gonna get the opportunity to live with a hybrid car and put to test those claims of huge MPG figures and just how easy is it to, to live with a car that you have to plug in overnight. You know, what is it? What is it gonna be like to drive? What is it gonna be like to live with? And over the next few days, I'm actually gonna go on a bit of a road trip and put some miles in this car. Interestingly, it's just been dropped off by Hyundai and it doesn't have very much electric charge at the moment so I've just plugged it in I'm going to leave it on trickle charge for the next few hours and then we're going to jump in it and get going on a bit of a road trip okay so I've had this thing on trickle charge for about three hours and let me just fire it up ding 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 and I now have a full battery by the looks of things, which is very cool. Now, what I'm gonna do from a fuel economy point of view is, although there's a trip computer on here, I'm gonna go to the garage and brim the tank. It's pretty much full anyway. The guys dropped it off full, but I'm gonna brim the tank and then I'm gonna do a manual calculation for fuel economy over the duration I've got the car. So next stop, is gonna be a quick splash and dash at the local garage. Uh, and then we've got uh, about 130 miles. So first stat then, I'm on full EV at the moment and I have an electric range of 37 miles and a gasoline range of 408 miles, making a total range of 444 miles according to the little computer thing down there. So it will be interesting to see exactly what I'm gonna get out of this. <laughs> Okay, here we go, at the fuel station. Let's get some of this old-fashioned gasoline in this car and see just how far we can go on a properly brimmed tank. Oh, there you go fully brimmed so next stop Stratford now let us get going what is very weird about this car is it has a foot handbrake I've never quite understood foot handbrakes um, especially in the days of a kind of electronic flick up handbrake I just can't see the point but it's very easy to kind of forget the handbrake's on and you kind of drive off and you hear this graunching of your rear brakes on and the car feels really slow and then you realise you've still got the foot brake on. So we now have a gas range of 516 miles, an electric range of 34 miles, so that's a total range of 550 miles. Okay, sit rep, and I find this quite interesting. I've been driving for literally just a couple of minutes shy of half an hour. I've done just under 18 miles, but really interesting. I'm just scrolling through the menus on the car, and the engine temperature is cold. I've got no engine temperature at all because I haven't actually used the engine yet. I've been running on completely EV. I've actually got a cold engine, so it's quite an interesting thing. You know, when you're driving one of these, if imagine you've driven for a you know, 15, 20 miles on electric, and then you get onto the internal combustion engine and you push on, you kind of then have to wait for the engine to warm up. Okay, so we have reached an important point in the journey. I am 26.8 miles in, and I've just had a thing pop up on the dashboard to say we are now entering hybrid mode. No longer can I run on pure EV. I don't have any more juice left in the battery. So up until now, my, my MPG is actually saying 99.9 .9 MPG. That's because that's the maximum number of digits that can be displayed there. But clearly I haven't used any fuel yet at all because I've been running on EV mode. Um, but I am now no more electric range. So I'm running on uh, as a hybrid. Um, I'm guessing the engine temperature is going to start running up as well. Now what will also happen here, which will be quite interesting, is um, the uh, internal combustion engine is not only going to be driving the car, 
um, but I'm also going to be, I'm guessing, doing some charging of the batteries. The car it goes into charge mode whenever you lift off or whenever you brake, um, so it's always trying to regenerate and recuperate energy. If you had really short runs, if you were only doing a 5 or 10 mile school run, you could get there and back without ever going anywhere near the ICU. However, uh, sorry, I ICE. However, uh, as soon as you want to go a bit further than 20, 25 miles, you're going to end up going into hybrid mode. So we're now, we've still got 100 miles to go to, to the destination, so we're now going to start using fuel. It will be interesting to see what that fuel consumption is like over the full journey, though. But if we did a fuel consumption gauge right now, I've used no fuel, so that's, you know, um, hundreds and hundreds of miles per gallon, but that's not the full story. Eighty-five miles in, and I have to say I'm still very comfortable, but the star feature for me so far in this car is adaptive cruise control. Of all the kind of options that you can check on a car, it always rates very highly for me adaptive cruise control. It just makes a longer journey on a dual carriage or motorway so much more relaxing and this one works really really well. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really liking the car. In terms of uh, fuel economy, I'm still no electric range left, um, but I'm averaging now 72.1 miles per gallon according to the computer so um, it's still brilliant but um, clearly because we've got no electric power we're running on the petrol engine and we are consuming go-go juice as we speak at the destination now normally what would happen when you arrive at destination is you get your bag out and you go inside and I don't know have a drink or something but no before I do any of that I need to plug the car in so I can charge the batteries up because tomorrow morning I need to drive from here in Stratford to Cheltenham and I reckon I can do most of that on electric power but I can only do that if it's been charged so let's get the cables out the back and plug the car in So all parked up, but one of the things that I needed to think about was where am I going to get the electric from? So at our, my friend's house I'm staying in, they've got electric in the garage, so we've basically run the cable underneath there. So these are all the things you kind of have to have a think about, you know, if you're staying over, where are you going to plug it in? Luckily, I'm going to be able to plug it in here, and, just, and ah, we're charging. This is quite cool. It's like the, I don't know, the indicator on your smartphone. If you can see the little indicator on the dashboard, that shows I'm charging. I've got three bars there, but there's only one flashing, so there's quite a lot of charge left. So that's it. If I lock the car, that will then lock the charge point in so it can't be nicked, and the car is now gonna charge overnight. And tomorrow morning, when I need to drive over to Cheltenham, I should have a full load of electric, and uh, hopefully a bit more electric range. Right, I shall see you guys in the morning. Good morning! <laughs> so we are in the car, ready to rock and roll. I'll tell you what, this foot brake doesn't half get some, take some getting used to. Now, interestingly, it is a very cold morning this morning. And even though it's been charging all night long, the charge indicator doesn't say I've got a full tank of electricity which is very, very weird. And I'm not sure why. So I've only got nine miles of electric range, even though I've had it on charge all evening. And I'm wondering whether that's got something to do with the fact it's only four degrees outside. And the other thing that's noticeable this morning, because it was cold when I started the car, um, in warm conditions, you start the car and the engine doesn't kick in. This morning, because I've got heaters and, and all that kind of stuff, the second I started the car, the engine kicked in um, I guess to kind of you know help warm the car up rather than using the batteries but yeah that is quite interesting that I have 
literally nine miles of electric range. Now that is going to scupper my fuel economy. Now my, my route this morning, I've got 34 miles to go to my destination today. And I had hoped to do most of that on electric, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And then the interesting thing, and this is the interesting thing about plug-in hybrids, is where I've got to park today, there's no charging. So I can't top the car up um, during the day to give me that electrical boost on the way home. So I'm going to have to basically do 70 miles today, but only eight of those I can do on full EV. So that's going to properly scupper my fuel economy. And I, I find that really, really interesting. See this, this is this challenge I have with plug-in hybrids is the is that kind of short range. If you can't plug them in every night, then you are compromised. And maybe if that was your style of journey every day, maybe you're better off with a full-blown hybrid um, rather than a plug-in. So that's it. I'm not very far into my journey and I've just had hybrid mode come up on the dash. So yeah, that's interesting. I need to maybe just check that I'm sure the power was on all night long I can't understand why it didn't charge fully but I am now driving it in hybrid mode which which will severely affect my fuel economy well I have safely arrived at my destination pretty much all the way on hybrid power I now need to go and do a day's work so I shall see you at the end of the day but there's no chance that we're gonna have EV on the way home but I'll catch you a bit later on in the day Oh, what a day! <laughs> Hard graft monies earned. Now time for the drive back to Stratford. What a beautiful, beautiful day. It's much, much warmer. I can report that basically, uh, yeah, the electric status hasn't changed at all because I wasn't able to charge it up. Now, interestingly, in this car park, there is a charging station, but I'm not sure of the etiquette whether you can leave a car on charge all day. I, I, I'd imagine that that's bad form, but I, I don't know. I'd love to know, put the comments below what, what you think about that one. But um, I think it's a case of shades on, music on. Uh, head back to Stratford. Okay, so all is revealed. I am now back at where I'm staying and I've just checked because I was really concerned that it didn't charge properly last night but the charging unit is just here and what I've noticed is that the trip had actually gone on the extension flex so we are now fully charging you might be able to see that so hopefully tomorrow we'll have a full charge in the Ionic for our drive back to where I'm working but, but yeah hopefully that's kind of answered the question as to why I didn't have full charge in the car this morning see you guys in the morning Good morning. Well, I think charging worked last night. Let's have a quick look. Oh, we have a full charge. Excellent. Oh, look at that one's kicked in. So off we go to work. Now, um, I have to say this foot handbrake is a pain in the bum. I really don't like it at all. So one of the things I am gonna do, notice the engine's kicked in because it, it's gotta kind of do all the heating and stuff. Um, because it's quite a cold morning again this morning, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in, force it into hybrid mode. So when I first drove this car on this journey, I had it in full EV and it ran as a full EV for the first um, 20 or so miles and then ran all the battery out and then ran as a hybrid. My plan, because I've got to drive to work today and then from work I've then got to drive home. So. I've got quite a lot of miles to do today and if I ran it in full EV mode this morning, I'd run out of battery and then it would be really struggling um, all the way home. So I'm gonna try and run it in um, hybrid mode and see how much uh, that battery will last. So the idea now is the, the petrol engine's gonna work and it's gonna be assisted by the battery and I should, in theory I reckon anyway, get a longer battery life and more fuel economy, I reckon, over a longer journey anyway. So let's kind of see how that works. So we have arrived. Now, interestingly, I've done about 40 miles on hybrid. Now my indicated MPG, and I know that's not massively accurate, but for now it will do, is 60 miles per gallon, which is nowhere near the plus 200 miles per gallon quoted by Hyundai for the combined cycle of this car. But I still have 37 miles of electric range. So I've got pretty much a full battery to 
can basically use on the way back to Chichester this evening. That is me done. The end of the working day and I'm now on my way home back to the barn. Uh, I have 112 miles to get home. I have, let me just see what my range is. I've got 36 miles of electric range. Still 293 miles of gasoline range. I'm in hybrid mode. But I reckon, so how to get the really high uh, miles per gallon? It's relatively straightforward. If you were doing a journey that was, let's say, 25 or 30 miles and you had a full uh, charge, you would do infinite miles to the gallon because you'd get there all the way on electric. Any more than 25 to 30 miles to the gallon, you're going to use up your electric and then you're going to start going into your fuel. Um, and the further and further the journey goes. So I reckon if you did a journey that was like 50 or 60 miles, you would get super, super fuel economy because you could run the first half of the journey on electric and then the rest on hybrid mode. But if you're running a long journey, so I'm going to do, you know, 112 miles, on hybrid mode, I'm still only averaging about 55, 60 miles to the gallon. 60 odd miles to the gallon in this car seems like an achievable MPG, but 200 plus miles to the gallon really doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't. On a short journey, if you're only commuting 10 miles to work and back on a full charge, you wouldn't even need to use any fuel at all. You just charge it up and use the electric. But longer journeys, there's just no way you're gonna get 200 odd miles to the gallon. It's just, it's just impossible, it doesn't work. So, really interesting. I've, I've been thinking about this for the last 20 minutes or so. So on my way up to Stratford, I used EV and I ran out of electric charge and the hybrid engine kicked in and I stayed on a, on a base amount of electric charge and you could see that the car tries to recuperate energy and put it into the batteries whenever you lift off, when you brake and those types of things. And it then maintained the, um, the charge at a certain level. I'm now at full electric charge, but I'm running in hybrid mode, and it's done the same thing, basically. So my charge has stayed, I'm basically completely topped up, um, and it recuperates energy and puts it back into the batteries whenever it can. And it's basically drawing uh, forward momentum from both the engine and the electric motors. But the downside of that is my, my MPG for today, so driving to work and then on the way home, and I'm about kind of halfway home, is only 56 miles per gallon. Now, I know I can improve that, and what I'll probably do is when I get nearer home, is I'm gonna turn the hybrid off and go to pure EV mode and use up that electric, because I guess the argument here is, there's no point getting home and still having a full electric charge. What I really want is to get home and have used up all the electric and then that kind of minimizes the amount of fuel you use. And I think that's kind of how you need to drive this car. <laughs> now then, for about the last 30 or so miles, I've been running on pure EV and I have now run the battery state down so that the car has just kicked into hybrid mode. But interestingly, my MPG for this trip has now risen to 72.8 miles per gallon. And that's a mix of A and B roads and quite a bit of motorway driving um, over a distance of about, so far, what I've, I've still got 10 miles to go before I get home, so about 150 miles. And I don't think that's too bad. The downside though now is that because I'm now running on hybrid, that MPG figure is unlikely to go up. If anything, it's gonna start coming back down again. Good morning guys, and what a beautiful day it is here in West Sussex today. So we are very at, nearly at the end of this video. I'm gonna remember to take that foot brake off. And the hybrid's kicked in because I've got no electric. I didn't charge the car overnight. Um, we are very nearly the end of this video. The last thing I want to do is I'm gonna drive to my fuel station, brim the tank, and then do a manual miles per gallon calculation to see what MPG I've done over the 364 miles I've done in this car over the last uh, three days or so. 
Here we go then, local fuel station. Worth pointing out, by the way, I've done 366 miles, so I still have just under half a tank of fuel left. So I don't actually need to fill up at all, but for the purposes of this little experiment, I'm going to. Right then, the numbers are in. So I've just put 23.8 litres of fuel. So let's just quickly stick this into good old Google. 23.8. That works out of 5.24 gallons. 5.24 gallons and we did 366 miles. So uh, 366 miles divided by 5.34 equals accurately 68.5 miles per gallon is that good is the foot brake again um uh, it's a really good mpg figure don't get me wrong and you know i don't think i've ever owned a car that that delivers 60 68 miles per gallon it's brilliant but in real world driving conditions that's what you're gonna get and yes as i explained if you have shorter journeys where the larger proportion of the journey is on EV you're going to get much much better fuel economy than that but over a range of different types of lengths of journey and different driving conditions that kind of 65 to 70 miles per gallon is absolutely achievable so that brings me to the end of this kind of living with real world fuel economy test I hope you've enjoyed it if you have done so give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already Please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come and I'll see you on the next film which is going to be a full review of this car, a collaboration review, everything you wanted to know about it and the major thing I'm going to do is I've driven this car quite conservatively since I've had it just to try and see what the MPG we could get out of it but I haven't yet really put it in sport mode and seen if it's got any kind of life to it. So tune in for that one but I'll see you on the next film guys, you take care. Drive safe.